She never goes to conventions! I've got bigger problems on my hoofs than dissatisfied fan ponies. This tense action scene is a lot less tense when you remember she's a Pegasus and probably should have flown over to begin with. You read, I pack. That's the deal! Imagine being able to summon an alicorn ruler to read for you. I just keep thinking about how much fun you're gonna have at the Daring Do convention. So, we finally reached the inevitable convention episode. There better not be apathetic venue staff, Ducky Makuras, and unrelated anime strewn about, because that would be a little too realistic for a small horse cartoon. I'll make sure AK Yearling signs your book. And all the time Dash talks to AK, she never once asks her to sign the book. This scene with Twilight not only has no payoff, but it's very possible Sad Book Horse never got her book signed, sadly. And we know that she's secretly daring do herself. How many times can Dash get away with spilling secrets to the camera before some pony else overhears? Convenient smash cut misrepresents convention going by skipping over travel, the never-ending line for registration, and the Baltimore sinkhole. The convention pot dealer. Gunfight glimmer. Quibble probably should have recognized Dash right away, considering she was in and on one of the books. You will never be glomped by Rainbow Dash. The show will never recover from this Ducky Makura scene. It's all downhill after jumping a shark this enormous. The first series was smart and cool and an amazing nod to old-time serialized adventure books. And now it has fanboys at conventions browsing bondage Ducky Makuras. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong season. I mean, wrong series. The geeky fan argument scene is very well crafted and surprisingly accurate without being forced or condescending to the actual geeks watching. However, Rainbow Dash leaves without cleaning up after herself, so clearly it needs to be sinned. Dash is desperately trying to find AK Yearling, and look who just happens to appear! Whoa, the Amulet of Kulakon. Amulet of Kulakon, huh? <laughs> Odd name for a MacGuffin introduced in the Khan episode. But even more sinworthy is how the fan wiki, the actual script, and the way every pony pronounces the word is inconsistent. Maybe she's tied up because the use of clothing, or lack thereof, would be too suggestive for a d Nope, never mind, this one's not wearing pants. Derpy isn't winning the cosplay contest in this scene. Rainbow Dash carries on talking about the thought-to-be-fictional characters without any concern for how absolutely bonkers she sounds. It's like when Normie's over here bronies talking at the hotel. From the moment she's unbagged to the moment she's tied up, almost two minutes pass while Dash forgets she has wings, which none of their captors have. The jungle it took forever to get to? Time really does drag forever during the commercial break, huh, Dashy? Caballeron is very accommodating to thoroughly explain his plot to the ponies he's holding captive. To lure her into the jungle and exchange it for us. Why lure her into the jungle at all? It would make more sense to keep the location of the hostages secret. Quick! We've gotta get out of here and warn Daring Do! No way. Just point me to the hotel and- But Daring Do is at the hotel. Of course, Quibble doesn't know this, but Dash's insistent retort suggests she forgot as well. The only way to get back to the convention is to go through it. For some pony who insists this isn't a fictional Daring Do adventucation, Dash sure is acting like this is a fictional Daring Do adventucation. That is everything that's wrong with Daring Do and the trek to the terrifying tower. <laughs> Sounds like Quibble has himself a great title for his upcoming YouTube nitpick series. The precarious rope bridge should be a lot less precarious with a pegasus who can fly over it while carrying the weight of four ponies. Unless this episode's implying he weighs more than that. Instead of simply catching him, Rainbow Dash grabs the rope which could have just as easily wrapped around his neck. Maybe this isn't a rescue, but a failed attempt to stage an accidental death. Maybe if I just leave you in the jungle, it'll convince you. You will never glomp Rainbow Dash. Thank goodness they accidentally stumbled upon the Lost Temple so easily, or else they might not have made it back to the convention before closing ceremonies. So, did any pony send word to Daring Do that they'd be here at the temple? Wasn't she also searching for the temple herself? I I'm reporting you all to... Well, I don't know who I'm reporting you to, but it's gonna be some pony important! Good luck with that, Quibble. We already know lawsuits don't exist in Equestria, and Rainbow Dash has some very close connections to the government. She has alicorns read her bedtime stories, after all. Generic jungle locations, overly complicated villain plot, random coincidences that conveniently get us to the next big set piece. Recognition doth not a sin undo. Who learned acting from the supervillain school of bad accents. Quibble is basically a ripoff of Cinema Sins, and that's truly the ultimate sin. Dash and Quibble accept their fate, only to have their suicide interrupted by Deus Ex Do. Help save the world multiple times, and no pony really cares or notices. 
befriend a fictional character, and suddenly you can impress plenty of nerds like Quibble. We can't leave without the treasure. Okay, but why? The treasure is hidden behind traps and requires a key that only Daring do holds. Daring stealing this treasure isn't much better than Caballeron doing so. It was thought that Daring do looks like Rainbow Dash because the first episode took place in Dash's imagination. Of course, that was thrown out the window long ago, but there's not even a shred of logic for why Quibble's mane looks like Daring's. Uh, unless this is all Dash's imagination after all? Daring was actually about to open the wrong door, proving yet again that she is the worst archaeologist ever. Small room becomes hundreds of feet long to facilitate mobile conversation. Whenever performing dangerous stunts, it's important to have proper safety rigging. For a moment, the backup line is visible. Couldn't have done it without you, both of you. Gee, Dash, now that I think about it, doesn't Daring Do look and sound exactly like AK Yearling? You, Rainbow Dash, are awesome. Maybe this whole episode is just Rainbow Dash's fanfic. Dissatisfied fan ponies. Rainbow Dash? Daring Do? Oh, oh no!